Today we're going to be taking a look at something I picked up recently that's pretty unusual. This is a portable electronics lab. Now this is a night electronics mini lab designed for students to use when learning how to develop circuits. Now what this can do is give you all of the little extra things that you need when developing a circuit all in this convenient portable package. The idea here is that you just need the chips and maybe some passive components to design anything you need. You have things you typically need like a potentiometer here and here with different values, variable voltage power supplies with 0 to 18 positive and 0 to 18 negative. I don't remember what these are. Then over here we have the cool thing. We have a SIGGEN with adjustable frequency range a offset to that frequency to allow you to fine tune it. You can choose what type of wave you're going to output. The voltage level of this, uh, the SIGGEN is set there. And then we have an offset which lets you control how much AC component there is to it. Then up here we have GPIO that allow you to just set the state of something. And then we have some status LEDs. And over here we have something that I find particularly interesting. We have momentary contact switches that are these little levers, kind of cool. I don't know if, I don't think I've ever seen these before. Now my unit here is incomplete. There's meant to be a tool set right here that would latch in place at the top. Now while that would have been nice to get just to have this be complete, I don't really care. They were just cheap pliers, wire cutters, screwdrivers, that kind of stuff. Nothing I don't have already in better quality. Now, as cool as this is, having it in this case, um, the lid does not come off and that's as far back as it goes. So for the rest of the video, I'm just going to remove the unit itself here and we'll continue without the case. As a prologue to playing with this, I'll just go ahead and let you know what I'm gonna use to measure everything here. We have a 34401A, a uh, multimeter. I'll use that for the variable voltage power supplies, the potentiometers, and all the uh, IO and LEDs up there just to try stuff out. And I'm going to use a Bitscope BS10, I think it is, uh, the mini, as my oscilloscope. Last time I did a video with an oscilloscope, I used one of my analog scopes, and the time domain is directly tied to the screen refresh rate because it's a CRT and how it works. It's vectors it's it, it doesn't work when you're trying to film it at a set frame rate and you can't go below that I since I film everything at 60 frames per second uh, the frame rates pretty high and it's difficult to get something like that to work well so we'll just go with shooting off screen with a USB scope for now before I fire this thing up I just wanted to take a, a quick look at the electronics here because Oh wow, this is uh, something. So this bottom, oh the bottom wants to slide off. It's just on a rail, is there anything? Yeah, there's a gigantic transformer mounted to that. We're not taking that off. You'll we'll probably see that from the back here. This is uh, whew, some interesting construction here. Um, I wonder if the students who bought these had to assemble them because wow, this is clearly not high volume build. This thing isn't that old, I think. Let's see if I can find a date code on a chip here all right 95 yeah that's not that's not super old so yeah this is just clearly low volume screws are all loose i'm not the only one who took this out every time they wanted to use it all right here we go let's flip the switch ah, i see power here we got we got power. All right. So let's try some stuff out. Let's set this to, yep, it's on DC volts. And let's just try probing the power supply first. Ground and positive 12. And yep, it's looking good. I just don't have a great connection. So let's do this. There we go. Awesome. All right. So we've got some life. All right, before we move on to the SIGGEN panel over here, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other stuff that makes life really easy when you use something like this. So if I put a connection between the momentary button here and the LED and hit it, you'll see when I push that, the light turns on. So, and 
you can, you don't have to wire up a button to send out a signal in something like this. And if I put it over here, you get an inverted signal. Put two of those on at once so you can see them both going at the same time. Pretty neat. Now over here, we have a state. Pretty basic. We have enough I.O. here that we could say set an address on a digital chip and then we could clock in data or something over here. Lots of different things you could do. Now down here we have our variable power supply. Move that into view. So let's try this out. Alright, so we can see we've got 14 volts right there. And if we adjust this, we can go lower. We can go higher. Max is 18, but it looks like it's going to let us go... Wow, that's a lot more than the 18, so 21. Wow, man. Okay. Good job, designers. So, 18... Actually, it happens all the way to there, and you can just keep on trucking. But, uh, yeah, that's all dead right there. So, when you're at the lower end, how fine a control do you have? Where's 5 volts? There's 5. So, that's, that's a bit of range, or a uh, lower end. So, you can go down to 25 millivolts, looks like. And that ramps up pretty slowly. That's not too bad. And then, if I move over to negative here... We'll get something similar, but negative values. Max is there. Max on negatives only 7.5? Really? 7.6? Wow, okay. I wonder if the ground sucks then. We already tested positive 12 is good. What about negative 12? Does the negative power supply just suck? Nope, that looks good. Weird. Okay. Now let's move on to the tensiometers. See how see how wrong those are. I mean, these should just be off the shelf parts, so there's no reason for this to be non-functional. Or inaccurate, I should say. Yeah, two. Move it slowly. Okay, so that's 0.2k. 0.5. Alright, so what's our max going to be here? Yep, okay, so that one's good. And then, for those who've never used a potentiometer, they're actually a three-leg device, so if I move this to the other side here, we'll see it'll be about one ohm. Boom. Ah, oh, a little less than. And we can go back the other way. So the idea here is that you have three points, you have the wipe, then that moves back and forth between the other two pins and adjusts the resistance. So this would be zero ohms, and then this would be 1K, and if you move it here, you would have 5, or 0.5K, 0.5K, move it maybe just three quarters away, you'd have 0.25K, and then 0.75K, and then 1K, zero. So it's relative between the three pins. Alright, move it over to the 100K. Let me see. Yep, that looks good. It's actually 100 point, or 1.2. Yeah, 100. It's, I think it's dirty. A lot of these pots have been dirty because I've been using them. I may need to replace them. I don't know. They're, I feel like they're a pretty standard part underneath. So, yeah, I think I could replace those. Yep, this one looks pretty good. That's right. I think I'm going to go ahead and try out the SigGen now. Let's see. Try this. Uh, gen. Ground. Alright, can I get anything out of this? Okay, so now we have the full output here. So I'm going to change, I can change the offset and we can see how that gets affected. Now I can change the level here, make it smaller. Oh, it seems to be a little dirty. 
Uh, I get smaller. There we go. If I go too low, yeah, it, like it wraps around. All right, so here we go. Now we can see our sine wave. That's not a that's not a terrific sine wave, huh? Oh well. I mean, it, it's good enough. Uh, let's see, just the level, so it's about the same as the clock here. There we go. So. That's, yeah, that's extra not a good sine wave. Let's see what a saw wave looks like here. Yeah. Ah, that's interesting. We have some ringing around the uh, different points on the saw wave. Let's look at the square wave. Square wave should be identical nearly to the clock. Yeah. If anything, it's actually got some better edges in the clock. Clock's a little noisy up here. Yeah, that's looking better. All right, I'm a little happier here. Uh, now we can go ahead and make some adjustments, bring these some more of these in. Yeah, let's see what a sine wave looks like. That close. Yeah, I'm not happy. I'm not super thrilled with that sine wave. So we can see, actually, that there's also a small amount of ringing on the sine wave. I really, the sine wave is clearly just a smooth version of the saw wave, which is fine. That makes sense. Um, would have been nicer to have something a little bit more sine wavy like, but uh, yeah, that's not too bad. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to adjust the duty cycle on here, so that limits some of the functionality of this. But this is still pretty useful to have. Uh, just a standard sig gen. There's a lot of stuff you can do with that. So, <clears throat> oh man, as you wiggle that around, it gets real noisy. Maybe I, maybe I bumped ground. That might have been it, actually. Yeah. That's cool. Well, we can really crank that sucker up. Yeah. It's an, oh, the voltage. I dropped there when I... Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, let's see if we can find something to do with this right now. All right, well, now that we have this thing set up and working, let's make it do something useful. So, a while ago, I bought a crap load of stuff at Goodwill and I got these inductors and yeah I this is like maybe a third of them it was they were just it was so cheap I was like all right I'm just buying them all because they came in one huge bag like oh my god so uh I have no idea what value these are so now that I have a functional stick gen here let's go ahead and calculate their value Oh, this will be a fun little exercise. Okay, so I have a circuit that can tell us what the value of our inductor is. Okay, so I've gone ahead and made a diagram of what I've set up here. So here we have a 10 ohm resistor in series with our mystery inductor that we don't know. Now I've tuned the frequency coming into this circuit until the value after the inductor measured here is half of the voltage measured here. So we can see yellow here is our channel A, which is red, that's coming into the resistor from here. Channel green, which is B, which is actually the green one, is measured after, and we have it we have them at half the value. Now, if we run that through our inductor formula, we can put in our 10 ohm resistor, and what the frequency I had to use to get this to work was actually uh, 60 kilohertz, approximately. This is a little rough. Um, stuff's not necessarily calibrated. That may not exactly be a 10 ohm resistor, but this is gonna get us close enough. So we can throw in our 60 kilohertz here. Now, this is the formula for calculating an inductor um, value without a capacitor. After putting that in, we get a value that looks like about 46 microhenries, which seems uh, like a reasonable number. And if we go to DigiKey and look for 47 microhenry uh, inductors, 47 is a, a number that shows up more in series for electronics, uh, we can see, looking at some of these, that that looks about like what our inductor here is. So I'd say we're safe to say now that these are 47 microhenry inductors. 
So there is a real use for something like this really basic SIGGEN. I didn't know what the value of these were, and now because I have this, I was able to determine that. So this has real utility for different things like this. So I think that covers uh, everything there is to really say about this. We could take a look at the electronics a little bit more in depth, but I kind of want this thing to actually work. And oh, it's a nightmare in there, so I don't want to. I don't want to dive into that. But uh, yeah, we've seen how this can actually be useful for something, um, and I'd say it all works perfectly fine. So I'm happy to add this to my collection of tools and. I really wish it didn't come in such a huge case that's going to suck to keep it in, but maybe I could, like, make some kind of propped up... Ooh, that back, that trans... Yeah, there's a lot of loose screws that could be put in there, but it'd be cool to make, like, a panel for this where everything comes out on BNCs, so that could happen. I mean, this is already slightly nice, but if everything was towards the bottom, I think this would be... I mean, they really could have designed this a lot better. This should have been in the lid of the case, for one. There should have been a whole bunch of I.O. here. Maybe even just some cable that runs down to the bottom, and then you have, like, a really huge work area here, and then all the knobs up there out of the way, because it sucks having your cables running near everything. Anyway, I I'm pretty happy with this, so... Um, I hope some of you enjoyed this, and maybe if you have one of these, you have a better idea of how it works now. Um... I can't imagine too many of you do. I think these were really expensive. I'll edit the price in, like right here. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope uh, some of you had fun with that. I'll see you later.